There's a couple fish coming in, down the video shoot, back into the river, and off they go on up to Canada. Or wherever. And okay, this is the uh, this is the rapids video CPUE thing project and Paul Chum 24 hour count project. And uh, nothing in that basket. And anyway, it uh, instead of storing fish in this live box down here, this is a box, it's four feet deep, um, eight feet long. Uh, that door right in the center of the picture there is open, so it's open to the river. So anything going in that live box right now. Oh, wow, we have three fish coming in at once. All three of them coming down, hitting the video shoot, boing. Boom, boom. And, okay, another one. All right, all three of those fish just got their picture taken 14 times back in the river. And like I say, off they go to Canada or wherever. And, uh, okay, yeah, like, it's, like I was saying, instead of storing the fish in there and then counting them later, we just take their picture in here. You can see the camera, um, surveillance camera. It's like in a bank mounted right up there in the center of the picture. Um, that's streaming video right now back to camp. Constant streaming video of uh, live, live time back to camp through that microwave transmitter on the back of the wheel. Um, okay, back at camp there's a receiver dish and a receiver and that's feeding the streaming video into a computer that is programmed that when that door with all those holes in it that door opens and those magnetic switches down on the lower right hand corner of that door, when those magnetic switches get tripped by that door opening, that, that uh, signal also being sent back to camp uh, through that microwave transmitter. When that signal gets sent back, um, the computer back at camp keeps 14 frames of the video that is always being streamed back to camp. And it's a software program that just does all that mysteriously. Okay, so inside uh, there, that box with the flag in it, that's where the battery bank is that runs the camera and microwave transmitter. And that's the only electronics we have on the wheel. Uh, we used to have the laptop, the computer, and uh, VCR and everything right on the wheel, but uh, the uh, microwave transmit has changed all that. The project during king season when lights aren't necessary at night run off of that water generator, that blue thing right in the center of the uh, picture there. Um, that produces uh, a couple of amps in this kind of current. And that's enough to uh, keep the batteries charged. But like I say, during the fall time here, chum season, we run 24 hours a day instead of just 12. And it's real dark, you know, this time of year too. So those lights are necessary, and there's no way that water generator would uh, handle it. So you see those lights in the middle of the picture. One of them uh, goes on at the first hint of darkness, and the other goes on a little later. They both get timers on them, or uh, sensors actually, photoelectric sensors. And uh, yeah, and they produce uh, light for the video shoot there because uh, we're running uh, pretty high speed. Um, the cameras are running at pretty high speed and they require uh, a good bit of light. We're trying to get pretty good pictures of the fish. So, what else here? So we haven't had a fish come in, which is a little unusual. We were, we were uh, running, like I say, a thousand yesterday, and uh, that was August 1st. Seems to maybe have slowed down a hair today, but I'm probably still going to be 900, 800. But we will see when we count them at the end of the day. And
and we'll look at the uh, video files made by this whole system and that's how we count the number of fish come in. We just look at the uh, you know video files and count the fish right off of them. Alright, let's see if we can get another fish come in here. Um, nope. What else here? Yeah, like I say, this time of year we have to run um, we run a uh, a generator on shore. Um, got a wire that runs across those front cross pieces on the fish wheel. Oops. Okay, here we go. Another fish. Down the video shoot into the river and out the back. And he's gone. And for some reason, um, I think a lot of them, when they get uh, caught like this by the fish wheel, they head out into a little deeper water, just from what uh, we've seen with uh, radio tags and stuff. So that's why you, you know, you'd think maybe you'd catch the same one again right away, but um, we don't. Uh, but anyway, like I say, the wire. We run to shore across uh, on the spot pole and uh, put the generator over there. And that runs about 8 10 hours a day. Runs the lights and uh, charges the batteries. And let's see, right ahead of the uh, fish wheel here, there's two more. This is a real popular bend of the river for this is the uh, this is the place in rapids where you know the good fish wheel spots are right on this bend here and I don't know it's kind of a you might be able to see two wheels there right in the center there's an island right in the center of the picture there and that divides the uh, rapids up into two channels that's okay another fish Anyway, let's see. Yeah, that, that island up there divides the uh, channel into uh, two fish. And uh, what makes that's what makes these uh, these wheel spots so good is these wheels are actually close to the channel. And for chum, it don't mean too much because you know chum spots are you find them all over. But for king spots, it seems like you got to be. You gotta have access to that channel. You gotta be, the channel can't be too far away from uh, a good king wheel. This is the Rapids North Bank tagging wheel. Just got a good shot of the removable paddles and how they work. You can see fish hit the sides of the basket webbing underwater as they are being caught. Now we have one of two chum being selected for tagging right out of the baskets with no live box used. That chum is now being released from the tagging boat and this is a view of the rivers with it rapids. Okay this is the uh, fish wheel at rapids uh, turning and right now there's not a lot of fish in the river. Uh, it's a really low part of the run in between the king salmon run and the fall chum run and uh, it, just in a matter of days here, we may get some more fish coming, uh, some fall chums. And, uh, you know, when that, when that happens, you know, you can see like 10, uh, 10 to 40 fish uh, being caught an hour in the wheel. And, uh, you know, if uh, usually, you know, a person can't cut that many, so you'll turn the wheel on and catch what you need and then shut it off. Uh, so anyway, a little about the fish wheel here. The uh, vertical poles on the inside of the fish wheel here, this side of the fish wheel that run towards shore, that's a lead fence, and that deflects fish uh, towards the fish wheel. Without a lead, uh, the fish wheel would be just a fraction uh, of a, efficient. Um, every fish wheel needs a lead. Um, it's a standard part of a wheel. The only wheels that don't are if you put one up against the vertical bluffs or something. Uh, where you don't need anything like that. The bluffs itself act like a lead. 
Um, so that just so the wheel right now, uh, it's not even catching fish. It's uh, right now we have a two-day closure, so uh, the wheel is actually um, just counting fish, along with uh, catching fish for my family and myself, and um, for dogs and all that sort of stuff. I uh, I run a counting project where they uh, there's some cameras installed on the wheel and and the uh, wheel go the fish get caught in the wheel um, right now they'll slide down the basket like if there was a fish being caught it would get caught in a chute there and deflected back into the river but in the process a camera would uh, record their being caught so at the end of the day I just count how many fish are on that camera and and turn the counts over to uh, the US Canada uh, treaty panel with people that uh, that uh, fund me for counting this uh, with this project here so so that's the uh, fish wheel like I say it just turns right now it's turned 24 hours a day and it'll turn that way for the next uh, two months um, during king season I run it uh, for the first two months of the summer I run it 12 hours a day um, and I'll do that till uh, the end of September, at which time I'll shut the wheel off. And there's a campsite just about a half mile down river from here, and I'll pull the thing out of the water and put it in again the next spring. Been doing that pretty much all my years that I've been living in Tana. All right, well, we'll shut this thing off here.